Is this me? Is only this you. Tom? Only you can answer that question. Oh, all right, all right, like that. Hey, listen, I've I've listened to you a few times on my way home. I see. And you, you, you I've never heard anybody give such bad advice to so many people. Well, what advice have I given this hour? Well, I was, you know, I actually listened the other the other day. So you're not listening right now. What's that? So you're not listening right now. Oh, oh I did. I just heard it. Oh, what, are, what, are we, what, what are we? What are we? What are we? What are we talking about? What's that? What are we talking what? about? Oh, I, I, where you're just talking about women with MBAs. Yeah. Not, okay. And so, what uh, does this have to do with advice that I give out? Have I given advice out this hour? Oh, I, I don't know. Don't you always? So give out you advice? have? No, I don't. Don't. So let's review. You decided. I, I I had a topic. I had an agenda. I I put it forward. You heard the agenda, and you decided that you were going to change the topic of the show. Just you decided that you were going to take it in a different direction than I had taken it. Is that right? Well, actually, I just heard a number and it said call in. And yeah, I did not say. I said I, I asked a specific question and gave out the number. You did you miss that? Well, I, I guess yeah, when I got in my car, I must have missed it. I was just calling to talk You were just about calling with your own agenda that had nothing to do with my agenda. Is that right? Go ahead and throw it out. I'll, I've got it now. No, no, yeah, no. I'm you already know, heard You already heard what the matter. topic is. What comment do you have about the topic we're talking about? Um, I don't. I just... You know, I, just don't I don't need. Like I don't you. need a critique of the show. I don't need your opinion about what I do. Uh, we do a but, show but, like but that you, from you, time you, to time. You, uh, no, I don't want to hear. I don't really care what you. If you want to talk about what you think about me, there's, we we set aside hours for that purpose. And when that's the topic, that's when you call about that. But that's not what we're talking about now. And you yourself told us that you know what we're talking about. So what you're saying is, you don't care if the other four million people listening to the show are following the agenda, listening to the topic, responding accordingly. You decided unilaterally to attempt to change the topic of the show by calling in and talking about something that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Is that right, Grandpa? Well, I guess so. Right. I guess so. It From is. Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. How bad have things gotten? How bad have they gotten? You know, I used to read Business Week for you know advice on where to invest. <laughs> What's the point of that anymore? Uh, now I just read it to see how bad things have gotten. And things have gotten bad. During Christmas week, I did some Christmas shopping in Santa Maria, which is about 60 miles north of the city of Santa Barbara. It's where the Michael Jackson trial was. And the reason I chose to do my shopping in Santa Maria rather than Beverly Hills or L.A. is because, uh, unlike the Beverly Center, I don't have to pay to park. There was plenty of parking. And if you did your homework, you could find all the same stuff there. Uh, plus, I might add, in case you're looking to save a few bucks, the sales tax in Santa Maria is way lower than what you pay if you live in the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, specifically, seven and three quarter percent. <laughs> That's pretty great. Seven and three quarters. It's less than you pay here. Tell you what. So I went to a mall in Santa Maria. And I was shocked at what I saw. Shocked. And I'm, I'm not being facetious. I'm dead serious. I was shocked. I walked into this mall. And there was a... Uh, there was a department store. I guess it's a smaller department store chain called Gottschalk's. And they were one of the stores in this mall, along with uh, Sears. And as I walked through the mall, I could not believe how many empty stores were in the mall. One whole wing of the mall was fenced off. 
said it was closed to the public. And when you looked in there, it was just abandoned stores. Lots of them. Escalators to a second level where both escalators were set to go down just in case somebody did sneak over into this wing. The escalators going down, not up. And there were abandoned stores in other parts of the mall, too. And what was really amazing at this mall was that Gottschalks had taken over what used to be some of the abandoned stores in the mall, I guess to keep some life in the mall. So if there had been a Foot Locker, for example, selling, you know, athletic uh, uh, equipment like, uh, you know, tennis shoes or soccer balls, whatever, uh, they took it over and they slapped their name, just like a cardboard sign that said Gottschalks Athletic Wear. <laughs> And it was over in a bed, what, what appeared to be an abandoned store. And there were several stores like this in the mall. Got shocks, menswear, looked like it used to be a clothing store. Literally, the, imagine if uh, Macy's or uh, Nordstrom or Bloomingdale's just started slapping their name over stores where it had said for rent <laughs> in your shopping mall just to keep things going. This mall was tragic. It was scary. And you know what? It it was not in disrepair. It didn't look like a bad place. It simply looked like the economy has been hit really hard, like there's a hole shot through it. Well, I just read in Business Week. Hold on to your hats for this. I thought the shopping mall in Santa Maria was bad. Business Week quotes a source. It says... That 73,000 retail stores will close in the first six months of 2009. 73,000. And if you think about it, that'll include all the Starbucks locations being shut down. I got something else about Starbucks to tell you in a minute. That will include all the Mervins, the shoe pavilions. I already saw empty linens and things around now. Several of those stores are gone already. They've liquidated all their merchandise. That will include the circuit cities that are going under. (laughs) I mean, the the list is endless. Uh, All the stores that have been going out of business or have planned to go out of business or have filed bankruptcy or are shrinking and closing certain locations but not other locations. Wow. Wow. Could not believe that when I read that. 73,000 retail stores will close in the first six months of this year. But this is the one I loved. This is also in Business Week, and you can check it out. Go to businessweek.com. See it for free. This was great. You know how Starbucks is always so touchy-feely when you go in there? Oh, yes, they believe in fair trade, and they only buy coffee for fair prices. They don't want to take advantage of the poor farmer. And they're, you know, always talking about being green and they're talking about world music in there and, you know, third world cultures. And they're just so sensitive. They're just so touchy feely there at Starbucks. Do you know that some people in New York who work for Starbucks attempted to form a union called the Starbucks Workers Union? And these baristas were fired. Of course, they never said it was for union organizing. They said it was for other reasons. But the National Labor Relations Board has sanctioned Starbucks for what is, in essence, union busting. Forced them to give back the jobs of these baristas with back pay and benefits. So touchy-feely Starbucks now, the first story appears, the first story rears its ugly head, alleging that Starbucks may have a touchy-feely image, but when it comes to unions, they want no unions working uh, at their stores. They want no unionized workers. They don't want that. Starbucks is already having problems with profitability. Year-to-year profits at Starbucks down 95%, which we reported here. Well, how do you like that? The National Labor Relations Board in the middle of December sanctioned Starbucks for firing three baristas who were known union organizers. And this union claims it has now 350 members. What would that do to Starbucks if all the baristas formed a union? (laughs) You think a $5 cup of coffee is expensive now? (laughs) 
What would they do? Oh, yes. They wa they don't want to exploit the workers, you know, in Ecuador. They don't want to exploit the workers in Namibia who grow coffee beans. But if you're a barista, don't be forming a union around here. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is kind of becoming a recurring theme on our program. We've asked this question before because things continue to get worse. You heard your own president-elect, Barack Obama. You know, he's um, he's no Ronald Reagan or George W. Bush in giving out uh, cheery assertions that things are going to get better. He was having a meeting yesterday with his economic team. And he said to the cameras that things are bad and getting worse. So how bad are things? I mean, there are ways to tell that things are bad. During the Christmas season, you could see the way things were bad. Lots of people walking around malls, many of them not carrying any bags. Empty stores. <laughs> Starbucks workers now being sanctioned <laughs> for, or fired, allegedly for uh, being uh, union organizers. Things are bad. Did you see the uh, car sales figures for like the five top automakers sold in the United States? Uh, you know, GM, Ford, Chrysler, Honda, Toyota, all down at least 40%. All down at least 40% in the last sales figures. Wow. So I have to ask you the question that I ask you from time to time because it keeps getting worse. We have to find out. How bad is it? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas, Likas show. show. How bad is it? The Tom Likas show now with the shortest commercial breaks ever. Ever. That means there's more show when you need it most. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. How bad is it? Carlos, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Uh, happy New Year. Thank you very much. Um, well, over here, while I'm out of Ventura, I see a lot of, you know, car dealerships going out and stores, Linden and Think, Mervyn's, uh, KB Toys. It's, so it's, for me, it's pretty bad, but like uh, I was saying, uh, uh, Sean Hannity is saying that it's not, it's not that bad. Is it because he, well, he couldn't, he I think if you make twenty million dollars a year, it isn't that bad at all. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking. Sitting on that big lot of money. Not to mention the fact that when your entire <laughs> script comes from the Republican National Committee, the president is still a Republican today. Uh, of course, he's going to say that. Yeah, we'll see if he's still saying that on January twenty first. <laughs> I'm amazed that uh, you you listen to Sean Hannity. Do you believe what he has to say? No, not all. You know, every now and then he makes a little sense. I agree with him, but a lot of stuff I just listen to because Sean's a friend of mine. By the way, I love him to death, and I think um, the world of him personally. I really do. Yeah, but he yeah. knows he knows uh, very well uh, that if uh, you call me and ask me that question, that this would be my answer. That yeah. uh, I've I've never heard a radio program that is more controlled by a political party than the Sean Hannity program, TV or radio. Well, I guess he's he's kind of he's kind of worried that they're gonna uh, silence him. And uh, well, I know Bill O'Reilly's already going out, but he's worried about you know getting silenced. By the way, if there is a, this is a question for Sean Hannity, if there is no recession, uh, why did the company that he used to work for, ABC Radio? Uh, lose $880 million in the second quarter of last year, and uh, then uh, shuttle him off to Premier Radio Networks, another company. You know what? I'm going to try to get a hold of him and ask him that question. Ask him that question. Say. Ask him. I mean, if there's no recession, why is Citadel Communications in such financial straits? Uh, you know what? I'll ask him that. But uh, can you take me out? I ask him, ask him who he works for now and why he doesn't work for ABC anymore. Okay, I'll, I'll ask him that. Okay. Uh, can you take me out Kurt Warner style? Kurt Warner style, of course I can. Thank you, Jesus! 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. How bad is it out there? Ludwig, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Okay, how you doing? 
Hey, I'm doing great here. Look, Ludwig, uh, you weren't born in Germany, were you? Actually, no, I wasn't, but I do have a little bit of German heritage was, there. Was, you know? your, was your father a drummer? <laughs> I am a musician, though. No. Just check yes, it. I, okay. Yeah, but thanks, right man. over your head. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> hey, man, it's crazy, man. It's, it's like, crazy. Um, just today, Tom, I got, like, four or five people coming into my place, my job, looking for a job. Really? Yeah, man, and uh, and actually, and you don't even of, like, and you don't even like your own job. Oh no, hey, actually, you know what, Tom? I enjoy my job, Tom. What, um, what do you do? I, I work in the automotive industry. I provide uh, aftermarket oh, uh, boys? parts. That boys. One of those. <laughs> Come on, you work in a retail store. The, yes, it's it's retail. Yes, I work in the automotive industry. You, you want everybody to think you're the CEO of Chrysler or so? <laughs> By the way, well, who, I don't. I don't want to be too specific. I don't know how much trouble I can get for you. By know? the way, you probably make more money than uh, the CEO of Chrysler. Is he taking a dollar a year now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, nowadays, huh? Maybe he should say he works at an auto parts store. <laughs> yeah, well, it'd be better for him. Uh, but it's even funny, Tom, because a couple of guys they don't even want a job. They go in there to get signatures so that they can enroll in unemployment. Can you believe that? Yes. Oh, my God, you know, I'm working my ass off, and there's people trying to rip off our government. What is that, dude? Oh, I'm shocked. That's my a, goodness. Of course, the banks that took uh, $250 billion from the government to, quote, unquote, uh, unfreeze the credit markets and, and lend to people, then sat on the money. <laughs> talk, dude, about, talk about people ripping off the government. I, you know what? You're right. I'm seeing it left and right. When am I going to get some of this relief, you know? What, what's going on, dude? Um... It's crazy out there, Tom, and it's it's probably going to get worse, like uh, like Obama said. And uh, I'm wondering, Tom, uh, have you seen any more drastic changes in your own lifestyle? Well, I, you know, I I'm going to be fair about this because we talked about Sean Hannity. You like Sean? I make good money, and I have a contract, so um, I I'm not required to change my lifestyle. Uh, but I uh, I will tell you that because there are opportunities to cut my costs, I am. Very good. It's I mean, everything's on sale, and that that includes everything from clothing in stores to cars uh, to the rate on your cell phone. And I'm taking full advantage of it. I'm calling everybody. I, I called my insurance agent this week. I said, my car insurance premium is too high. I want it lower. That's it. Dude, and, and you can strong arm everybody that. now. I was going to say that, too, because for some like who actually have some like spending room, it's actually very uh, convenient for, for those who have a little bit of spending room, because... Since everything is going down, you know, they, right. they're the ones who get to take, you know, the advantage. Right, but know? I want to caution everybody. Don't take this as an opportunity to spend money and get yourself into debt. That's a very bad thing to do, no matter how good the prices are. Oh, not at all, man. That's how we got into this mess in the first place. Yeah, that's but, uh, right. Tom, thank you so much. It was good talking to you. Um, how about Bill O'Reilly and Old School? All right, Ludwig, here you Thanks go. Okay. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, no. We'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And things suck. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, how bad are things? For God's sake. Uh, let's say hi to Aaron on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Awesome, sir. First time, long time. Thank you. Um, Colin, I, I work for a uh, rent-to-own company. Uh, oh, I've seen it. Team. Aaron's rent-to-own. I've seen it. Oh, <laughs> I wish I owned it. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, well, that's not you. What's that? That's not you? No, that's not me. I wish oh. it was, sir. Okay. But, um, Colin, do you know much about the rent-to-own business yourself? I only know about it because I was once a customer back when I was dirt poor. <laughs> so, obviously, you know we're geared more towards low income or, or people that don't have the chance <laughs> yes. to get items. I am well aware. So our business right now is not struggling. What, what do you think the future is of our business? Do you think we'll, we'll grow more, or, or do you think we're going to be hurting as well? Short term, I think it's fantastic. Uh -huh. That's a good business to be in. Short term, as, as far as well, the next me, six months, the next year? Well, as long as the economy is in the crapper. Uh -huh. uh, is, is this, it's not a bad business to be in any more than payday loans are a bad business to be in or subprime mortgages were a bad business to be in. <laughs> I mean, uh, preying upon poor people can be very profitable. Okay. I, I, for one, uh, used to do business with a company. I think it's out of business now called Granada TV Rental. Uh -huh. And um, for $5 a week, that's right, per week, I would rent a color TV. And uh, it would sit on top of a, I, I got a, a crate, like a milk crate, 
Uh, and uh, I sat the TV on top of the milk crate. Wow. And, uh, sat, and I had a mattress on the floor, and I used to sleep on the mattress with my rent-to-own Granada TV rental TV. <laughs> a TV that, by the way, like so many of your customers, I'm sure, no matter how many weeks I made that $5 payment, I could never, ever own it. <laughs> I only rented it. <laughs> <laughs> Until we get stuck, when you bring it back, then I got to sell it to someone else after it's outdated. Don't five years. worry. There's somebody out there. there. There's somebody coming into the store next month with their you know 2009 coupon, the digital yeah. TV converter box. And they're going to need that TV. Is, is the is the rent on business something you would invest in? Well, put it this way. I wouldn't buy a franchise in it. Uh, but if I were buying individual stocks, I think that's one of the rare areas of the economy that will do well. I mean, there are stocks doing well. McDonald's is doing well. Walmart is doing well. Uh, anybody who caters to uh, people who are trying to cut costs is going to do better. And rent to own is certainly cheaper than owning. Right. In the short term. Uh. People who do it forever, like people who get a payday loan every week, uh, then it costs way more, of course. Totally understand. Thank you so much, Tom. Aaron, thank you. Appreciate the call. Come on. Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Now heard six days a week. That's right. Three until eight as you head home Monday through Friday on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And on BlowTheUptop.com. And now here are Saturdays as well, 2 to 6 p.m. That's six. Count them. Sunday is the Tasting Room with Tom Likes from 5 until 7 on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And at BlowTheUptop.com. TastingWithTom.com. Oh, yeah. You'll find us somewhere where every way spreading like a cancer. 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about the economy. It continues to get worse. How bad is it? It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, things are bad. How bad? Okay. Well, I'm a personal trainer, Tom. I, I train here in the Valley. And uh, let's just say last January, I was, I was averaging around 120 k uh, a year part-time. And... And after January, of course, personal training is pretty, pretty, pretty much in demand. And every single year before, phone going crazy. This year, maybe one or two calls, maybe one or two calls. And now I'm, I'm actually down to around 80k a year. So and, I and guess I much, guess if people can't afford to eat too much, they don't need a personal trainer as much. You know, it's kind of funny because here in the valley, here in LA, you and I both know vanity comes before everything else. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I don't know if vanity comes before uh, breathing and eating and having a place to live. Uh, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Some of my clients. Do you train? Do you train anyone who lives under the uh, underpass there next door to uh, Ed McMahon? Not yet, <laughs> not yet. But uh, it's getting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, things are things are getting pretty bad. Ed's you know, really Ed, gotta hate me. Yeah, yeah, he he has to. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Dave in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. You know, I, I do resent that just a little bit because I went to um, uh, what, what you call it down there, a little theme park called Disneyland, and I saw more porkers than I've ever seen in my life. But uh, yeah, but these are all tourists like you. Uh, 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 that's true. That's true. But Do you uh, think people in Southern California are uh, going to theme parks all the time? We've we've all been there already. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Hey, I wanted to comment on um, the importance there's nothing, of the There's nothing there's nothing there's nothing like seeing those photos online of uh, your neighbors there at Splash Mountain as they're coming down the down, down the log flume there. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't I didn't get to see that unfortunately, but uh yeah, maybe, oh, they're all maybe, over the internet. You can't miss them. Maybe next time. Yes. You know, I'll, I'll look forward to that. Um higher education, I think that's pretty important at this point. Um I think a lot of the lower level jobs, you know, up here there's I mean down there of course a lot of migrant work. Uh, I feel bad for those folks cuz I mean a lot of those jobs, those are the first ones to go and uh, I think you know having a higher education is something that people um are going to be glad they got. 
Well, I've been telling that to people for years. Unfortunately, many of them don't listen. They marry or knock up their, or move in with their girlfriend, and they say, I'm making good money. I'm making $10 an hour over here at the Pep Boys. And uh, I'm making $20 an hour in construction. And uh, what do I need an education for? Get a lot yeah. of those calls. Yeah, and you know, I mean. Now people are going to find out what they needed it for. Exactly. Sometimes it looks good to have a nice paying construction job where you're getting a lot of hours and high dollar, you know, maybe you're getting prevailing wage, but then when that, all that goes away, then you're like, uh, uh oh, not good. No doubt about it, Dave. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yo, Tom. How's it going, man? It's going great. Awesome. Well, you know what? The reason I'm calling is because I saw a little thing on, on uh, you know, Yahoo Splash page. Yeah. And uh, they were talking about giving people IOUs instead of giving their uh, federal refund checks. Or, I don't know, uh, state refund checks. I don't know. I just want to call and find out what you think about that. I'm thinking <laughs> of giving the state of California an IOU. The state of California? Yeah, because you're talking about the state, right? Yeah, I think it was the state. Yeah, I just saw it briefly. Yeah, the state of California. I'm thinking, of giving, them, I'm thinking of giving them an IOU for my taxes. I, I don't... Uh, you know what? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I'm sorry, Tom. All right, well, uh, you think about that. Turn up the radio. You can listen back in the delay and then uh, call me back later. Carlos, calling from Seattle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father, how are you? Son, I'm doing great. Father, I am struggling out here. You know, um, there's some tough times ahead of us. Uh, I myself, you know, just like you said, I got a little bit comfortable. I had the nice little plush construction job, you know. Promise me big raises, you know, uh, management positions, blah, 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 blah. Two months ago, before I know it, I got slapped with a letter, uh, you're being laid off. What did you do? What was I your job? Uh, I was construction. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the first thing to go up, you know, <laughs> uh, after the media businesses. Uh, that's the first thing to go. You see what's happened to the newspapers. Uh, but uh, construction uh, definitely is one of the first things to go because big companies are cutting back on their capital expenditures. And building buildings or rebuilding buildings or expanding buildings becomes low priority when you're laying off workers and you don't have a place to, you don't need a place to put those people. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I know, I thought I had myself ready. You know, myself, I'm a veteran. You know, um, I had a lot of experience in construction. I was doing pretty good. You know, I was making about uh, 30 an hour. You know, I thought I had it said. You know, I had Let me ask you a time. question. I, you know, I see here you're 25 years old. Did, did you just think that, that things are great all the time, that we never have any uh, hiccups in the economy, or that there's always construction going on? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, there was, I mean, you know, because uh, I mean, for a long time, I mean, there was never this kind of thing going on, especially here in Seattle, since there's such a good well, economy not over in, here. Well, not in your lifetime, but um, I would tell you, if you crack open a history book or look around the Internet, you will see the years 1975, 1981, 1990. 1990, things were pretty bad in a lot of places. Oh, yeah, sir. You know, I've actually, uh, I've had to, like, downscale way, way on my life. You know, I, I used to have, like, the nice apartment up in the Highlands, you know. Uh-huh. Nice cars. Now I'm actually moving into a low-income housing. Oh, uh, I, I, I have a freaking part-time job as a server at a restaurant. And you know, don't you and think this would be a good time to take the uh, veterans' benefits you have and get some education? Uh, actually, th that's what I'm doing, sir. Actually, good for you. I, start, I, I just started school today, sir. Good. I'm proud of you. That's exactly what you should be doing. If you don't have enough uh, work to fill your time, get a degree, get some more skills, get something you can market. Work hard. Make something of yourself. Construction construction is great short term, but you can't do it for life. And, and another reason you can't do it for life is, let's face it, as you get older, getting up on those steel girders and moving around becomes harder and harder to do. You know, what are you going to do when you're 50 years old? Oh, yes. Uh, my father's 65, and he did construction all his life, you know, and I can see that's all that's taken on his body, you know. I mean, he's a strong man, but still, you know, I, I could figure if he would have had a little plush job, he could have been running around like a 20-year-old right now instead of, you know, with a, uh, with a hunchback and stuff like that, Tom. But thank you very much for your advice. I really appreciate it. Can you take me out African style with, with Snoop Dogg? <laughs> yes, Carlos, I can. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge! Yes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Javier on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? I'm doing okay. 
Hey, uh, well, I'm out here, uh, um, Mercedes technician, and man, times are tough right now. Now, I would imagine that, and this is interesting, because... Um, I would imagine times would get better because less people would be trading in their cars and therefore would have to maintain the cars they have. Now you're saying that people who own Mercedes are not even bringing them in for maintenance? Not even bringing them for maintenance. Um, we have one of the higher rates as far as Benz goes, and uh, people are just ain't having it over here. Like, like last year, about this time, we were averaging... I was averaging about 100 to 120 hours a pay period, and now it's like down to like 60, 70. Wow. Yep. That, then that is a real indicator that things are getting worse because, uh, you know, I can tell you I've had my Lexus now. Uh, it's the longest I've ever owned one, four years. Uh, but I will tell you also that I'm taking it in more often for maintenance. I'm making sure that it's uh, getting the regular oil changes and, uh, you know, having all the, the belts and everything checked on a regular basis at the dealer. Uh, to try to make it last as long as I can make it last. Yeah, um, I, I, that's that's what I would be doing, you know, and taking care of my car. But it seems like a lot of these people out here just don't want to spend the money. They'd rather not bring them in or not. Uh, like, we try to upsell a lot of things that the car doesn't need, and the people just ain't having it, or they'll go to, like, independent shops and somewhere where... Well, people... now, I, I have to imagine this is not the era of the upsell. Excuse me? I have to imagine this is not the era of the upsell. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw quite an amazing report on uh, Channel 4 here in L.A. the other night on some of these uh, these lube chains and what they try to upsell you to once you come in there. And oh, they're yeah. actually upselling people to services not only that they don't need, but that the manufacturers specifically recommend you not get. Oh, yeah. Like, those, those lube, lube places are whack. Like, uh... I, I I went there one time because I just had no place to change my oil, and they're trying to upsell me all this stuff that I knew the car doesn't need. I just, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, but how how much stuff do you upsell that the customer doesn't need? Um, no, I, I'm legit. There are, yeah, I I'd have to admit there are some technicians out there that are just you know trying to do what they can. And, well, come on, yeah, you you do sell people things they don't need. Maybe they're things that are that wouldn't hurt their car or wouldn't be bad to well, get, but that that they don't need. That's why yeah. it's an upsell. Yeah, I guess so. But, uh. <laughs> uh, believe me, when you when you when you go to the fast food joint and they ask you if you want hot apple pie with that, that's an upsell. Do you need hot apple pie? No. Would it be nice to have one? Well, sure, it would. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess you put it that way. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the car, things that wear and tear, the people are just uh, you know saying, uh, "Not today. Never mind. Uh, I'll go somewhere else." They're Basically. getting they're getting exactly what they need and getting out. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, I, I'm I'm starting to second guess this whole technician thing. I'm actually thinking of going back to school because I I've been basically the rep who sent me to school or sent me to my school, but just light his little butt off. <laughs> I, I I'm a big advocate of going back to school, Javier. If you want to do that, I think you should. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likus Show. What's up? Baby? The Tom Likus Show coming to you from Hollywood with less commercial breaks, shorter commercial breaks. <laughs> it's easy to listen and hard to turn away because if you tune out on a commercial break, you may not get back in time. Might as well just stay with us here. 1-800-5800-TOM. How bad are things getting? How bad is it out there? Raquel on the Tom Likens Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to call in regards to the uh, the talk about the higher education and how important that is right now. Um, I am finishing my senior year up at USC. Um, and, you know, I... I I've spent around 200 grand for my education, which I obviously value very highly, but um, it's, it's, things are not looking up for any of us entering the job market right now, regardless of education. There are hiring freezes everywhere, no matter what field um, you know, anyone's looking into, to the point where people are questioning, you know, switching their majors and possibly spending more money on you know, more education, um, and I mean, for people going into debt even more, it's just, it's like a catch-22. It's tough, no matter education or not. It's now, really uh, what, what did you major in? 
I am a broadcast journalism and political science double major. I would have warned you uh, not to not to waste your time with broadcasting as a major. Really? As a lifelong broadcaster. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because I went I went to Fordham University. Uh huh. And ultimately dropped out because of the cost, but also because I realized that the people in the classroom were the failures in the broadcasting business. Really? Well, let's face it. What does a professor make? Sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars a year? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Actually. I I I, know I, that. I I burped that much before breakfast. Uh, okay. <laughs> you, you understand the reason I'm not a a college professor working at a college as opposed to the professor of Lycus One Hundred and One mm -hmm. is because <laughs> that's a pay cut I'm never going to take. Right. You know, this year I'll make more than most college professors make in their lifetime. So now think it out with me. If, mm -hmm. if you can make that much money, why would you be a college professor? Answer, because you're a failure at broadcasting. Um, you know, perhaps you're right. Um, not necessarily, though. I've had uh, all my professors are fabulous, and the uh, majority of them have left their work because they did their thing. They made their money. They're done. They're doing this. That um, or they got laid off uh, because uh, companies have been cutting back. No, these aren't. No, these are people that have been at our school for years. Not um, not recent. You know. Well, why why would they do that? I mean, <laughs> look, I've made a lot of money in the broadcasting business, but the last thing on my mind is going to a university and teaching this to someone. Mm hmm. I mean, I could never imagine working for that little money. Yeah. I mean, if they made that much money, why not just retire? I don't know, but I mean, overall, my point is it, because it's they need the everyone. money. It's tough for everyone right now, not not just people. I mean, people with um, you know, an education entering, you know, and it's tough for all of us. We're freaking out. I mean, we're going in like you know, grown up jobs now, and it's a really tough. Um, it's a really scary time. Well, uh, you do have an advantage. Let me tell you what it is. Uh, of course, although it would be illegal and it would be age discrimination for companies. Uh, to unload the oldest and therefore highest salaried employees, many companies are doing just that. Yeah. And so the people being hired for jobs who are being hired are younger with much less, if if any, experience uh, who have college degrees. I would also venture to guess that people with college degrees would be the last to go in a company mm -hmm. where you had people with degrees and without degrees. Yeah. And I, and I think definitely, obviously, a college degree is going to help you, you know, versus someone who does not have that education. It's just, again, it's taking longer to get to that point, I, I guess, than expected. I mean, a lot of people are going straight from school and doing um, when, you know, even last year, instead of going right to a job that, you know, they should be going to, it's, it's going to a restaurant to be a waitress for a year and a half now. Right. No. Before you even get that opportunity, so right. Uh, keep in mind also, though, many people are predicting that at least the stock market, if not the economy uh, as a whole, will turn around in the middle of two thousand nine, meaning around July. Mm -hmm. uh, you will not regret getting a college degree. Sure, it's scary. I don't right think now. I will at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Sure, it's scary right now. Yeah, but a good reminder that uh, you need to have an emergency fund established. Once you get out, you need to keep your debts to a minimum. No credit card debts. That means zero. Mm -hmm. Zero. <laughs> you know, keep lean and mean. Right. right. And uh, your health club is the YMCA. <laughs> yeah, or running outside. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. it. Or, you know what, buy yourself a treadmill. Right. <laughs> But uh, do okay. not do not get in one of those contracts. Do not uh, commit yourself to anything. I uh, yeah, I heard we were coached in contracts. It's a pretty scary thing. Right. <laughs> to get sucked into that. Well, don't do it. I won't. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Tom. Thank you, Raquel. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. How bad is it out there? Let's say hello here to uh, Brett on the Tom Likas show. Tom, I care. <laughs> thank you. 
I'm a general contractor, Tom, and um, doing residential, so it's pretty tough right now. But the reason I called in this morning, I was at our local um, Dun Edwards paint store, and there were three people in the store, and one of the people in the store was talking to the workers there, saying that yesterday he was at the Frazy store, another paint store, um, right before they closed. And he, he overheard them talking that they did $68 worth of total gross sales for the entire day. What? $68. Now, again, uh, there's an example of a business that I would think, I, I don't think any business is going to be doing great, but I would think would be doing better than other businesses. Uh, because people can't afford to move, can't afford to buy homes, you would think painting the interior of your home would be one way to at least make a change, brighten things up, make things feel new, uh, like m doing maintenance on what you have since you can't afford to upgrade at this time. You're right. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than a major remodel, and it's something that, you know, with time and a little bit of um, know-how, most people can do themselves. Uh, and a lot of people who have been laid off from their work or furloughed or uh, cut back with their hours... I would think they would have more time to do stuff like that. It's like the guy who called in earlier who services Mercedes. You would think, okay, they're selling less new Mercedes, but you would think then that people who own an existing car would bring it in more often for maintenance. If they are blowing off maintenance on their car, things are worse than we thought. And now if you're telling me that, that people can't sell interior paint or even exterior paint, uh, that, that even though they can't buy houses, they're not even going to maintain and freshen up the existing places where they live. That's also an indicator that it's worse than we think. Oh, yeah. And can you imagine a retail establishment with employees, utilities, everything else, how much they went in debt just being having their doors open that day? It's a very good point. Wow. So things are pretty bad. We'll continue to examine this on the Tom Likas Show. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Have you got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Our show streams live on our website, BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.